Yeah. So that's okay. Well, I mean, I can record it or. Yeah. I can come next week. Yeah. I'm having Mike is coming to check the furnace. Mm -hmm. oh. And if I'm first at eight o'clock, then I'll be there. Um, but if he comes tomorrow, Right. And you can't tell them what 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 no, to do I mean, or what job to do. <laughs> well, you know, I will show up here. Well, we're here today, but next week I'll show up here, and maybe if it's like nobody shows up, then we'll just skip it. <laughs> I mean, no, it's not at night. I don't know why. I don't know why. Or maybe she's catching it up at a different time. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Okay, then we'll have to find Rob. We'll do it okay. Yeah. All okay. things are good. All things are good. That's fine. Well, we're going to start with Proverbs chapter six. We're working through there. But how about a word of prayer? Let's pray. God, today it is gray and cold, but you made it and it is good. Thank you for gathering us here today. Thank you for the world that you have created through our day as we take deep breaths and get ready for the winds of change. Help us to see your faithfulness in this whole world. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Proverbs, gain some wisdom. All right, I'm gonna, sh no, I don't want that one. Want that one? I'm gonna share it's Proverbs six. This is not a, it's not one that goes starts in alphabetical order in Hebrew. But we do have a little six. chapter six. Yeah. I thought we did one, two, and three. No, no, no yep. we did five. We did five. Yeah, okay. we did five yeah, last we week. Did okay. One and two, well, and we did three, four, okay. Five yeah. Week. All right. Mm -hmm. I studied. <laughs> four or five. On six. six. Yeah. We're on six. On six. All right. Well, um, how about I begin reading? Proverbs six. Let's see how many verses are there. Thirty-five. Holy cow! That's okay. Nice there aren't so many verses. You feel like you're getting somewhere. Well, I'll start. I'll read one through ten. My child, if you have given your pledge to your neighbor, if you have bound yourself to another, you are snared by the utterance of your lips, caught by the words of your mouth. So do this, my child, and save yourself. For you have come into your neighbor's power. Go hurry and plead with your neighbor. Give your eyes no sleep and your eyelids no slumber. Save yourself like a gazelle from the hunter, like a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, you lazy bones. <laughs> Consider its ways and be wise without having any chief or officer or ruler. It prepares its food in summer and gathers its sustenance in harvest. How long will you lie there, with lazy bones? When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. All right, you want to keep going? Verse 11. I have to ask you, look at the end of verse, uh, in the end of verse 9. You got a King James White yeah. Bible. They're not using lazy bones, are they? No, how long will you sluggard? Sluggard. We'll have to look that oh, up. Oh, sluggard. I thought, what did you just say? Yeah. Like an armed warrior, scoundrel, and a villain goes around with, with crooked speech. Crooked? What did you say? Crooked speech is exactly. Perverse. Oh, perverse mouth. Winking the eyes, shuffling the feet, feel the feet, pointing the fingers, with perverted mind, devising evil, completely. Sowing discord. On such a one calamity with descent, what? On such 
of one calamity will descend suddenly in a moment, damage beyond repair. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that hurry to run to evil, a lying witness who testifies falsely, and one who sows discord in the family. My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake the law of your mother. Find them continually upon your heart. Tie them around your neck. When you roam, they will leave you. When you sleep, they will keep you. And when you awake, they will speak with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the light is its law, a light. The proofs of instruction are the way of life. Okay. Four. Four. Yep, twenty-four. Um, to preserve you from the wife of another, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress, do not desire her beauty in your heart, and do not let her capture you with her eyelashes. For a prostitute's fee is only a loaf of bread, but the wife of another stalks a man's very life. Can fire be carried in the bosom without burning one's clothes? <laughs> or can one walk on hot coals without scorching the feet? So is he who sleeps with his neighbor's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. Thieves are not despised who steal only to satisfy their appetite when they are hungry. Yet if they are caught, they will pay sevenfold. They will forfeit all the goods of their house. But he who commits adultery has no sense. He who does it destroys himself. He will get his own soul. Mm -hmm. oh, he soul. will get wounds and dishonor, and his disgrace will not be wiped away. For the jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he shows no restraint when he takes revenge. He will accept no compensation and refuses a bribe, no matter how great. The end. The oh, end. <laughs> there is absolute value. It's so great when I have the, I like the, oh yeah. Well, and we, you know, we go through, so um, before we go, I know our, our Luther uh, Bible study has a little bit to say, but just curious as to what do you think? What caught your attention? What the, caught you? Um, the amount of proliferation of nastiness, kind of. I mean, the things are going all kind of in the wrong direction. That we're going to and how all your body parts can go, do so yeah. many awful things or things mm -hmm. do this yeah. or heads or that's how people won't get away. I was interested in the smooth lips of the of the prostitute. And it comes up often, smooth lips, smooth speech of a prostitute. I didn't yeah, realize absolutely. that was part of the process. Experience that but it comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. And they said that's that's what kept getting the Israelites in trouble over and over over the years. That oh, they sure. get involved with the, the women of the opposite tribe, and then they they want to be together, and that would cause them to worship their idols, and there they be out on their own oh, again. Sure. Twenty-four. Um, to keep you from the evil woman, from the flattering tongue of the seductive. Ooh, flattering tongue. That's even more scary than the yes, Wow. Hey. We're gonna look up some Hebrew words in here. Let's see. I wonder what the message would say. Bad guy. The message Bible? Yeah. Oh, well. I, I think there's, there's um, 
Thank you. What do I want to say? Great appeals for the message Bible. For some people, I think it's a wonderful thing. Oh, well, yeah, I think so. Oh, come on. I want it. Oh, I can't do it. Okay. Um, what are we looking at? Um, verse 24, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Let's see. Twenty four. If you want to see that Bible study, it's quite fascinating. Huh. Yeah, it's definitely the Hebrew is evil woman because Ra is evil. Um, my shop, my shot from it's like it's like woman. Lash Maraka to keep you. Um, and then of a seductress, um, Nakria. Yeah. Where does that come from, Nakria? It's an ad. So, so again, yeah, it's a Nakria. So, which means um, foreign or alien, like no Cree. Um, so it's someone outside. Yeah. Well, again, like, you know, I think we're, we got to uh, keep in mind that th these are just um how to live in a relationship with God. And so like in the beginning, we have all this conversation with about neighbors and, you know, um, one of, there's two commandments that in regards to neighbors, you don't covet your neighbors, anything. I mean, wife and then anything. So, um, or spouse or husband. Um, and so this is just really, opening up to expanding, what does that mean? Um, what else I noticed, hmm. um, our Bible, the three of us, mm -hmm. several times it said, my child, this, my child, that, and Susie says, my son. Let's look at the Hebrew. And you know, I'm thinking, well, that's the difference in the times, you know, because mm -hmm. now we're trying to be inclusive. However, yep. that actually changes the translation. I, you know, I kind of like to know exactly what the biblical people meant. Did they mean my child or did they mean my son? I think they really meant my child. So the Hebrew is, is B'nai, which is my son. Uh, but really, that is for, yeah. Yep. Yep. And I thought that that's just the, the, whole, the whole concept. And I don't know exactly what they wanted to do, but I think, okay. Yeah, yeah for sure. At the beginning of chapter seven, at the beginning of seven, my son, keep yeah. my words and treasure my commands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, I mean, again, this is written, but yes, it, I mean, the Hebrew is definitely son, but it is meant for a wider audience than just sons. Uh, what about, what was I gonna look up? Oh, uh, verse six, I thought was interesting. Um, so the word, the Hebrew word for ant is the mala. <laughs> I think that's interesting. It, yeah, it really is. It's um, oh, interesting. That's not ant. Hold on. What is this? Oh, interesting. Okay. So, ant is um, a cell. And Namala is the, um, they reversed it here. That's kind of funny. Is the uh, sluggard. So Namala. Yeah, I think 
Wait a minute. This can also mean um, I'm a strong person. Oh. So. Right. Wait a minute. Put a lid on it. Hang on a second. I have to read again verse 9. How long will the library holding be? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've always had trouble with that my whole life. I should have been a PM nurse and worked PMs. Oh, that's not all. Oh, I know. One more minute. And every morning in my life, I would think, well, at every least morning. it's not the pickle factory. <laughs> I would always think that at least it's not the pickle factory. Well, again, okay, so yeah. So go to the ants, you ladies, but serious ways. Okay, so again, we so we've addressed neighbors and and then what's another um commandment out of the 10 that kind of deals with lazy bones in a sense. I mean, so there's three mm -hmm. times where like the commandments are in the Old Testament and yeah. each sometimes it adds a little bit like what it means. Um, but remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Oh, I suppose. So in, in the Old Testament, there are, you know, there's more explanation that there are six days for you to work. Okay. And the seventh day is the day of rest. Um, so in a sense, like, I don't think it pertains to, I want to push the snooze button in a sense, but um, be mindful of what you're called to do um each and every day and i think it's kind of interesting you know go to the ants you know think of so i mean and, and in a sense okay so and and again it's i think the ant is an interesting um thing to look upon with this because the ant just has a single colony right like think about it like an ant farm and those little you know um, they have their group of people. Um, they all kind of work for a single purpose um, and they kind of understand their clockwork in a sense. And that's what this is calling the people uh, of God to do is to work for your group together. And, and when you work for your group together, you uphold the commandments um, and you work together and you understand when it is to be snooze a little you know and i saw a whole thing about ants yesterday yeah and then they showed them and if one gets hurt the others all gather around and they stay around them and they give them positive energy and they said normally 20 percent of those animals those ants should die somehow they figured huh. that out but with all the ants around it giving off they think it actually does convert from their energy to his energy and does some healing. And 80% of those guys live because of the positive energy of the, the ants around it. I know wow. that even that they were so much closer to nature than what we are. Oh, sure. Well, because we're human. Everything and has to do with the sun rising or the ocean, mm -hmm. a blowing or whatever so much in tune with nature. I thought I always thought it would be interesting to, with the ebb and flow of our seasons, like work during the daylight hours and sleep, you know, have that really good long winter sleep. <laughs> Go to sleep at 4 30. Do you want to work? That's other days to get them all in twine? Maybe. Oh, she's saying follow like more the, the, the sun the schedule. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, in our and the the 
Luther Seminary study, um, it focuses on verses 16 to 19. There are six things that the Lord hates and seven of, uh, of them are abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that hurry to run to, uh, to evil, a lying witness who testifies falsely, and one who sows discord in a family. Um, and the summary is to learn from the ants and don't be lazy. Uh, this is the first and one of the most memorable of a good number of warnings against sloth and proverbs. One of the classic seven deadly sins that has been identified as laziness, or to use the more ancient and colorful word sloth. The device of learning from non-human creatures is another one that comes up often in Proverbs. So we're going to come back again to this. Sure. I've read that. And then I saw the six things that he hates. Yeah. But then I never saw anything about the seven things that are, I mean, there must be some overlap, but I, I never saw that they actually listed both. No, I don't think they listed both. Yeah, I was looking for No, it's previously mentioned. Um, oh, and then if you fling to oh, the next page, again, continuing. Uh, oh, in the Bible study. Yeah. It says the sin of pride is at the top of God's list. Um, I'm going to share the screen. Um, continuing in a consideration of sin and sins, the writer now lists seven sins that are especially hateful to God at the top of the list of the sin is pride, frequently mentioned in the Bible as a sin, the Garden of Eden, where the temptation is to be like God. Um, and they reference Genesis 3, 5. To the Tower of Babel story, Genesis 11, 1 through 9, to the prophets, um, Isaiah 2, 11 through uh, chapter 2, verse 11 through 22. The early and medieval church considered pride here described as haughty eyes as one of the seven deadly sins. Lust, gluttony, uh, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. The idea is that when one's eyes are lifted up, one looks down one's nose at all others. Yeah, and the one thing is like um, throughout the Old Testament, there are phrases that kind of um, idioms in a sense that mean a specific thing. Um, for example, like um, in the Old Testament, when 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 it's read that like his nose got red or God's nose got red, it means God was angry. Absolutely, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If anything else, well, that's all they had on chapter six. Any other questions? Chapter six. Should we go to chapter seven? Sure. I get a little, not a kick, but that everything is mentioned from the sheep side of the thing. She does this and she does this and that's wisdom. wisdom. Yeah. It's got something. And that's you wisdom. Know, that shouldn't surprise No, me. it doesn't. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Well, you end it, so I begin again. So we should, should we start with chapter seven? Let's mm -hmm. do it. Okay. Uh, All right, how many verses do you have? Same as last time about? Uh, a little bit less. I'll read, I'll read at least 10. Uh, my child, keep my words and store up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my teachings as the apple of your eye. 
Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister and call insight your intimate friend that they may keep you from the loose woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words. For at the window of my house, I looked out through my lattice and I saw among the simple ones, I observed among the youths, a young man without sense, passing along the street near her corner, taking the road to her house in the twilight in the evening at the time of night and darkness. Then a woman comes toward him, decked out like a prostitute, wily oh. of heart. Oh. Yeah. That's the yeah, so that's so yours says harlot instead of wily of heart. Mm -hmm. You want, can you pick up with 11? She is loud and wavers. Her feet do not stay at home. Now in the street, now in the squares, and at every corner, she rides and waits. She sees him, kisses him, and with impudent face, Ooh, she says to him, I had to offer sacrifices, and today I have paid my vows. So now I have come out to meet you, to see you eagerly, and I have found you. I have decked my couch covering colored spreads of Egyptian linen. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Okay, hmm. so Come, let us take our fill of love until morning. Let us delight ourselves with love. For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home on the appointed day. Okay, Joyce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there again, yeah. how may it come by nature? We don't even know it. Right away, he follows her and goes like an ox to the slaughter, <laughs> or bounds like a stag toward the trap until. An arrow pierces his entrails. He is like a bird rushing into a snare, not knowing that it will cost him his life. And now, my children, listen to me and be attentive to the words of my mouth. Do not let your hearts turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths. For many are those she has laid low, and numerous are her victims. Her house is a way to shield, um, going down to the chambers of death. <clears throat> good job that's it this is seven. Oh my gosh <laughs> where are we begin with this one oh my word i'm in favor of trouble than any of them yeah uh, I'm going to jump first to since we ended with the um, study. I'm going to, if you flip your study, um, they talk about chapter seven, verses six through 27. And the summary illicit sex has severe consequences. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I mean, I think. It's not a free ride. <laughs> Uh, and you know, it still has consequences today for sure, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, again, um, in a sense, I mean, we're, we're not talking quite about the Ten Commandments, but about the relationship that humans are called to have with God in a sense that they're created and special and really, again, don't fill your lives up with junk. That's it. I mean, you, um, and the analysis says once again, the wisdom teachers provide a lesson dealing with sexual behavior. This time, the instructor takes the form of a story clearly and dramatically told. Note that the seduction takes place in the evening. The woman is quote unquote loud and thus quite the opposite of the ideal portrait um, woman portrayed coming up in chapter 31. 
She piously claims to be returning from worship services. She is married and her husband is away on a long business trip. And the willing young man is pictured as a pitiful creature, unwittingly headed for a trap. And the penalty, it will cost him his life. Just don't do that, right? Mine has a part that says her hopes is to leave the yellow. Interesting. Okay. My, you know my commentary is there are definite steps you can take to avoid sexual sin. <clears throat> First, guard your mind. Sure. Read books, look at pictures, oh. or encourage fantasies that stimulate the wrong desires. Second, keep away from the settings and friends that tempt you to sin. Third, don't think only of the moment. Focus on the future. Sure. Today's thrill may lead to tomorrow's ruin. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, all good advice, all good advice. It's not saying that, you know, a sexual relationship is bad. It's just saying that one that could really, that, yeah, a list, something that could really hurt you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Be good to yourself and your relationships. Be good to yourself and your relationships. I'm trying to think what verse, um, I'm, I want to look at the Hebrew um, about what, with her house leads to hell. Which verse was that? Yeah. Um, 27. 27. Oh. Oh, chambers of death. Interesting. What did they say? Her house, is... Her house is the way to hell. Okay, it is hell. Descending to the chambers of death. Does this one say still? Oh. Interesting. I'm going to go look at the other one. Come on. I'm going to okay. go there. And I want to go there. Oh, there. My seven. Because of course, in this one, this young man knows little or nothing about what she's doing. But she has these small, uh, smooth yeah. lips, yeah. and you know, and she starts gently, and there's it's coming closer and closer, and then she switches into high gear. He doesn't know what's happening, and yet it's going to cost him his life. Sure. Yeah. It's interesting. It's, um... The chambers of death. Sheol, there's Sheol. The way of Sheol. Underworld. Just the, it's more of a place of death. Sheol. But again, I think with the see with the my kind of like the interpretation of that using the word hell is very modern. And I think Sheol is a better yeah. for, yeah. so. Cause I, I thought, I thought when I was young that Sheol was hell, but found out and I think it was late school mm -hmm. that Sheol was a dark underworld. Yeah. Necessarily. Nobody wanted to go to Sheol or anyone. No. Uh, nobody. Chambers. Anything else on seven? Should we end on a better note? Um, verse 24 oh. is interesting because it says, and now my children listen to me, be attentive to the words of my mouth. Mm. You know, it all had to do with her mouth and her uh, smooth lips. And now wisdom says, listen to the words of my mouth. <laughs> my verse 24 is accentuated more than the other verse. Okay. You mean I like a chalice? A little bold. Oh, 24. Oh, oh. To a mm -hmm. lighter. Oh, for goodness sake. The other writings of the numbers. Yeah. Therefore, my. Now, therefore, listen to me. 
my children. It's 24. What does the second half of it say? Pay attention to the words of my mouth. And then it has a colon. And oh, I see. It, and then there are the words of I see. Mm. Evidently, that's a different translation of punctuation, mm -hmm. also. Well, 27, verse 27 says, Her house is the way to hell. It's mm -hmm. into the chambers of death. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And again, um, so just a, a, a Hebrew thing, right? Verse 24 says, you know, my, now my children. And we've read, like, in the beginning, it was my child, which is, um, yours says, uh, B'nai, or my son. Mm -hmm. to, and this one says, my children now, right, in 24. Oh. So the Hebrew for children, plural, is Benim, which is kind of, again, that's the <laughs> plural of sons. So it can, son can mean child. Okay. Referring to a classroom, or there was something to do with a classroom. Sure. And that's maybe why they don't see it. Well, so, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, and and they definitely um, broke down classrooms from uh, boys and girls at that time for sure. Oh. So, well, Mm -hmm. So this is ancient sex education. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I would say for but sure. Don't pull any no. Oh, they're not. <laughs> oh gosh, no. Exactly what would they have done with this for elementary school? No, they, wouldn't have they would have been, they no, have been, no, they would have said, no, which chapter are you reading? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you? Yeah. Oh, gosh. And even, so here's another fun one in, in the Old Testament when it said, um, like, uncovered feet or something yes, like that. Yes, that's in uh, Ruth. Yep. You know what that means? Yes. Yes, because I read in here, was it, I'm, I'm reading through the Bible. And wink, this, wink. And <laughs> and said, beat me sex. Thus man's sexual ah. organ was yeah. referred to as a foot. Yep. And that when Naomi told Ruth, go and lie down by his feet. Ta-da. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, again, how did they teach us this when you were a little kid? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm that's fascinating. Myself, how much of the Bible was, or the teachings of the Bible, are open to interpretation. Mm. It's not just what it says; it's how we interpret what the word says. Well, that's the that's the definitely gift of the Holy Spirit, and what we're yeah. supposed to do mm -hmm. for sure. And you know that that kind of brings me to um, different different. Uh, not religions, different uh, factions of religion. Denominations. Yeah, yeah, that some of us are entitled to read it and 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 you know see how it fits us and others. No interpretation. This is the way it is. If it says foot, it's foot. <laughs> right. And right. You, you you lose a whole lot in that. Mm -hmm. Was it chapter eight, and we'll finish there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You ended again, didn't you? Yeah. No, I didn't. Uh, 36 um, verses, so we must read nine. Yeah, so this is one that's only 21. Um, so chapter 8. Here we go. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Mm -hmm. Beside the gates, in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. O simple ones, learn prudence, acquire intelligence, you who lack it. Hear, for I will speak noble things, and from my lips will come what is right. From my mouth will utter truth. Wickedness is the abomination to my lips. Can you, can you pick up with the verse 8? Um, when they do things near the gate in the front of the town, that that meant official business. 
Oh, oh sure. That they made decisions okay. there and, and oh, yeah. passed on information. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Town meeting. Yeah. All the words of my mouth are righteous. There is nothing twisted or crooked in them. They are all straight to one who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than jewels and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. I, wisdom, live with prudence and I attain knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance are the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Be my king's by my king's reign and rulers to do justice. Let's read that again. Which one? By me. By me, king's reign and rulers to do justice. Be my prince. Princes rule? Yeah. That's what it says. Princes rule yeah. and nobles, all the judges of earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are me, and enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths, I'm almost done here, paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasuries. Hmm. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at, <clears throat> at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not made earthen fields or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limits so that the waters might not transgress his command when he marked out the foundations of the earth then i was beside him like a master worker and i was daily his delight rejoicing for him before him always rejoicing in, in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race <clears throat> And now, my children, listen to me. Happy are those who keep my ways, hear instruction and be wise, and do not neglect it. Happy is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves. All who hate me love death. To go. I think to see if I lost my way a little bit more. Oh, yeah, so we're done. Do we're done now. I didn't see my face. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, um, our Bible study packet says, um, well, this is a very central chapter in the whole book of Proverbs. Um, and not only, I mean, uh, wisdom is woman, personified as a woman, um, but is also active in creation. So this is one of the um, arguments that like wisdom is God or, you know, and, and there and part of God. Um, Bible and Man versus woman kind of stuff. I mean, what men do, women do, don't do, or whatever. I mean, yes. what women are trying to say. Yeah. Is there a delineate who God is who? And I mean, there are some, some scripture, but it's more 
Um, you got to read into the context and what that means, I think. Um, it never says it. That you don't read about men gleaners. <laughs> you know, okay. gleaners, you know, they go through the field. You know, they, they never actually say men do this and women do this, but it always seems that way. Yes. And have what's left. Right, right. Um, but it really is just, yeah. And when you look at it, it's it's making sure the relationship between human people and God are still functioning. So it's more like a, um, the gifts of the people to continue to be uplifted so that, you know, I mean, not everyone cooks, right? Um, but if that one's a good cook, then there's going to be a server. And then that means that one part of, it's just being part of the church, being part of a relationship with God is like being part of a well-oiled machine. Um, but now that I think that there's that one story where <clears throat> the, the men are all out in the ship in the boat fishing and Jesus is on shore preparing a meal. Mm -hmm. oh, right. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. I don't remember it ever coming up anywhere else, mm -hmm. but it's kind of stands out. <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah, that too. Oh. And this one says that the exact meaning of some of this, like the Lord created me at the beginning. The exact meaning of that is a little confusing, sure. but it says, it's, and then it, it rattles on a little bit, and then it says, but it is clear that wisdom was with God from the beginning of God's creation. Yeah, when we were little, I think we were led to believe that the, that the beginning of Jesus was when he was born on earth. But it's come more and more, I think, over the years, we have learned that Jesus was, was the son of God was there in heaven all, with him all that time. And that's just when he came to earth, right? Well, what is that? Was God? Because like she said it. God, Jesus. what's another name for Jesus? Emmanuel, God with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean... I'm not quite sure. It, yeah, I mean, you could think that way. Um, <clears throat> but I think the deeper understanding is that God is way more complex than a single unit. Um, and I mean, we uh, understand the Trinity, God's the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier. Um, and there's a relationship between all three, you know. <laughs> You really need to go, I think, and read your Athanasian Creed okay. <laughs> um, to kind of get an understanding of, you know, God is God, Jesus is God, but not, it's just, yeah. We learned early creed. on that there's a lot that we can understand. Just right. Accept it. And the Trinity is one of those things. Right. Absolutely. You know? Yep. Yep. No. This is probably one of my favorite chapters in Proverbs, I think, um, just because of the imagery for me um, of what wisdom, how wisdom is described. Um, it's beautifully written, isn't it? It's, it's very nice form of and, and even like in the part of creation, I always like the creation narrative. Mm -hmm. So that part of more depth, I think, in creation. So, so um, one of the things that, uh, like, in the beginning, like, this, uh, where wisdom says, like, like, at the cross, takes your stand besides the gate. Have you ever 
wrote, have you, wow. Have not good English lessons. Have a cross by their front door or the back door where they came in and out. I have one in my laundry room when it's coming. I just don't have the one. Is that right? And so I. Yes, I grew up in 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 and out a lot, um, and that is more. I think this kind of stems from that, so that when you go leave um, out of your house or you come, you know, come and go, that. Um, Wisdom or, you know, the love of God is or Christ is with you. By the door. There, I can see that when I wake up in the morning. Oh, sure. Tight. And, you know, when I leave the. You have a bunch of crosses in your room. I do. I do. They're just a reminder. Not to, they are definitely a reminder of that where I should be. Such. No? Yeah. I didn't really know money. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure yeah. if that um, but like in the um Jewish homes you'll have a mezuzah, which is just this little um oh gosh. I mean now it's artistic, so it could be metal, it could be wood it's just this little box and it's always put on doorposts and even on businesses and stuff if it's like a jewish owned mm -hmm. and in this little box is the just a small um scroll that has like um especially um from deuteronomy 6 9 the shema um and the the lord our god is one and it kind of it continues on and it's the talks about the Ten Commandments and, mm -hmm. you know, teaching it to your children's children. Mm -hmm. And like that. so that's like, I mean, that's on doorposts and everything. So wisdom, if you look at that, mm -hmm. you go out and leave and with wisdom on your mind. It's kind of like saying, I know this to be true kind of thing. It's wonderful to have visual reminders of those things. Mm -hmm. Sure like is. prayer shawls and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and even so many just of us are so visual. Yeah. <laughs> right. I I mean I I uh, on my right by my front door I have a really beautiful um it was a it's a it was given to me by my preschool teacher. It was her mother's and um it's the Lord's Prayer, but it's in this wood carving and it's in this wooden frame on this like red velvet background it's beautiful oh, but that's it. right by my front door yeah. um and then i have like a cross um at the back door and it says god bless this home when you come in or something yeah. like that um so i think if you ever want you know kind of keep uh, practicing wisdom you could do that that's a really good idea i was going to put this cross in my laundry room on the wall when I come in because that's the door I use all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Right, exactly. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's not as spooky as it sounds to put the cross in your laundry room. So I've only lived here now for you, almost four years. Oh, wow. It's time for the I, yeah. I understand that. Well, we conquered six, seven, and eight, and then Next week, we'll see what happens. It might happen. It might not. We'll just see. But we'll just keep on studying.